Guys, I just found the first Morel of 2024. Oh, there's another one right there and another one right beside it. Oh boy, we're on it now. Oh my word, guys, look what I just found. Good morning, everybody. Silas here today, and as you can see, I am out in the woods. I decided to take the day off of work. I noticed in some places, not so much around here, but out east a little bit, uh, they're finding some real mushrooms already. So I thought, you know what? It's a little bit early in the season. I don't normally go out this early, but I have found this early before. So I thought, you know what? I'll just go out and I'll look around, see what I can find. And uh, maybe we'll find some other wild edibles. We'll just kind of forage around and see what we can come up with. Really, the only reason I'm looking this early is because we did just get some rain a few days ago. So this would normally be the perfect time to find them. If it were about a week or two from now, I'd be finding them like crazy, I'm sure. After a rain like that. But uh, like I say, it's still been a little bit chilly here lately. But they might still pop up somewhere. I won't find any big ones, that's for sure. If I do find any, they're going to be pretty small. Plus, I'm looking for just any forageables. I can find it all. You never know what you'll find growing. Just got to keep your eyes out for all sorts of stuff. The only issue I'm having is that I can't see very good. <laughs> I'm having a hard time focusing. I have a pretty bad astigmatism. And uh, one eye is a little bit nearsighted, one eye is a little bit farsighted. So it's a little bit hard for me to focus on the ground. My prescription I got, the last one I got, I got in 2019. So it's way outdated, so I can't wear my glasses anymore. I have an appointment to get in and get a new prescription, but I can't do that until next month. So I'm just gonna have to deal with it for the rest of this season. I found them around this area before, so we're going to look it over pretty good. What is this? Did you find something interesting? What is it? Pepsi? Yeah, Pepsi Cola. Huh. That's kind of neat. It's not broken. 1961, I believe. Yeah, that's definitely an interesting piece of treasure. Guess we'll hang on to that. It's amazing. I've hunted this area, man, for probably 10 years now at least. And every time I come in here, I find something I didn't see before. One problem I'm having in this area is that, as you can see, it's really thick leaves and sticks and stuff like that on the ground. We haven't had a good flood in quite a while, and usually a flood will come in here and wash all this stuff away. That way it can start accumulating again, or a fire will come through and burn it all out. But we haven't had either of those in a long time, and so it's starting to get kind of uh, compacted in here, which the mushrooms will still grow no matter what. However, the, the difference is, is that they have to be pretty big to poke up out of this stuff here. I know some people will actually take a leaf blower with them and they'll run the leaf blower, <laughs> blow the leaves away so they can see what's under them. But uh, I'm not that far into it. This is, yeah, this is the spot. One time, oh, it's been probably about six, seven years ago, I came into this area right here. It was actually right about this time of year and they were growing everywhere. Great big old gray ones but this tree had just fallen at that point in time. But as you can see now, this tree is pretty rotted. There's not a whole lot of nutrients left in it, so uh, they're not growing here anymore. I haven't found any in this area for the last probably two or three years now. One thing I am seeing though, is that this ground is extremely dry. So I'm guessing they didn't get as much rain out this far as what we got back home. Cause we got pretty good rainfall back home, but this is quite a ways away from there, so. They may not have got enough moisture to do anything, so I may have wasted my, my trip coming out here. There's a place back home that I almost went instead of coming here. And now I'm kind of wishing I would have. Because <laughs> there's probably more moisture there than there is here. But usually they don't grow as early there as they do here. This is a little bit warmer area. It's usually about three to four degrees warmer here than it is back home. So I thought, but I thought wrong. No luck yet, but I did think of one tip that I thought I'd give you guys. As early in the season like this, unless you know what you're doing, a lot of times it's good for you to go out like midday or in the uh, afternoon. That way you can kind of see where the afternoon sun is at because that means the ground's a little bit warmer in those areas and uh, they'll probably grow there a little bit better. It's not a 100% success rate, but it does increase your odds a little bit, especially if you don't know where to look. And there's the octopus tree. That's what I like to call this tree here with all these roots. Kind of looks like an octopus. <laughs> Uh, in years past, a lot of times they'll come down here and there'll actually be a waterfall coming off of those. Obviously, being in the middle of an extended drought like we are, there's just a little bit of stagnant water down here, which I guess is better than nothing at all, but 
and it's sure pretty here about oh four years ago or so and there was actually a little waterfall coming off of this and coming down through here what was that look at that right there there's an oyster right there i'm standing here talking there's a bunch of oyster mushrooms growing off the roots Let's see if i can get over there without falling Oop. i think they're all too dried out but we're going to check them just in case this one up here looks somewhat promising I don't know. There's a bunch of them here, though. That one's really hard there. There's that one there. That one looks pretty hard. Yeah, it's still really hard down there. So maybe just one of these two up here. Of course, I forgot my knife, so I don't have anything to cut with. No, that's that's too far gone. That's a bummer though. I bet you here oh about three four weeks ago those are pretty good. It seems to be the story of my life when it comes to oyster mushrooms is I'm always about a month late. I say that we found a pretty good batch of them this winter, didn't we? Or I guess that was was that well, yeah that was winter. There was snow on the ground. I guess we'll look around this area a little bit better see if we can find anything else. Nope, didn't get the camera on in time. I walked up here and there was a deer right down there. Just took off. It's crazy how much the, the uh, what do you call it, Geog not geography, but the, the layout, the terrain changes from year to year. When I first started coming to this area, none of this stuff was here. And they had just cut down a bunch of trees, and boy, the morels grew like carpet in here. But every year since then, it's faded more and more. And now that I think about it, I think last year I didn't find any in this area. Maybe one or two. But compared to years past where I would fill up multiple bags and I would come out here two or three times throughout the season and fill up multiple bags every time I came out. But that's the name of the game when it comes to morel hunting. That's why you have to scout out new spots. And you'll have a spot that produces for years and years and years and then all of a sudden it'll just stop. And they'll pop up in a brand new spot. Hopefully by the time next year rolls around we'll be out of this drought and they'll be growing good again. I haven't had a... I haven't... Since I started YouTube, I haven't really had any bumper crop years to show you guys. Because it's wild when you have a bumper crop year. You'll just have bags and bags and bags and bags of them. I'd love to be able to share that with you guys, but in order for that to happen, definitely going to need some moisture. Guys, I just found the first morel of 2024. I see it right down here. Right there. Hiding down in the leaves. Check that out. Oh boy, that's a good feeling. I was getting a little bit discouraged. It's gonna take a few more than that to make a meal, but hey, it's a start. Now the way you harvest these, for those that don't know, the way I like to do it is I just like to pinch them off at the base right above the dirt. That way I don't have a ton of dirt in my bag. You can kind of see how the stem on this one here is actually a little bit moldy. So I'm gonna go ahead and pinch that off and save just the head of it. And then I like to use a mesh bag, put them in there like that. Some people say it's just a superstition, but I like to think that I'm spreading spores as I walk around. And even if that's not true, they breathe better. If you put them in a plastic bag, a lot of times they'll start sweating and they decompose faster. So this way it'll last a little bit longer in case you're out in the woods all day long or something like that. And when you find one, it's always good just to stop and kind of search the area and see if you can find any more in that same vicinity. Sometimes if you get down level on their level, you kind of look around You'll spot more now this early in the season they're probably gonna be hiding under the leaves so they're gonna be a little bit harder to find but i'll do my best and see what we can come up with these things have a unique smell that's unlike anything else i absolutely love the smell of these if they made a car freshener that smelled like morel mushrooms i would buy it they have kind of like a woodsy earthy smell I'm not really finding any more in this area we'll keep looking around though you just never know sometimes there's just one sometimes there's 50. you just <laughs> gotta keep looking I still remember the first year that I found this area. I was up here in this area and a friend of mine was kind of off that direction a ways and I was going through here and I was finding them like this, you know, just one or two small ones here and there. I had probably a dozen mushrooms or so at that point. And he said, hey, you need to come up here. And so I came through these trees right here. And when I walked right up there a little bit further, I looked down and they were growing everywhere. They were anywhere from two inches to five inches tall and they were growing like carpet. Man, we picked so many mushrooms that day. That was a ton of fun. 
And on wet years, you'll find clusters where you'll have, you know, a dozen mushrooms all clumped together in one, one spot. That's always fun. That was the only year I found big mushrooms in this area. Usually this area is full of small mushrooms, which I don't know why, they just never seem to get very big here. Other areas that I hunt, sometimes you can find some pretty big ones. In fact, I think the next time I go out, I'm gonna take my bike with me again, and there's an area. It's about a, oh, four mile hike. So I'm gonna take the bike, because there's some pretty good trails you can get down. So I think I'm gonna go check that area out, because I have found some big ones there before early in the season. I wish I would have brought my bike with me today, but I was worried about somebody stealing it out of my truck where I'm parked at right now, so I didn't bring it. Well, I spy number two and number three. Make sure you don't step on them. Sometimes it's easy, really easy, to get super excited and go running towards them and end up stepping on a whole bunch of them on the way. Right here, poking up out of the leaves. Yeah, these things aren't very big, but they're definitely eatable size. If they're much smaller than this, you know, if they're the whole mushroom is like the size of just the head of this, a lot of times I won't even bother picking them. I'll kind of cover them up with leaves. Oh, I see another one over there. So that's four of them now. But yeah, like I was saying, if they're too small, they're kind of hard to work with. And they will get bigger. Morels do grow. A lot of people think that they just pop out of the ground at the full size. That's not how it works at all. You know, three or four days ago, this here was probably just a little nub sticking out of the dirt. There's one there, got this one over here, make sure my camera's on, doing something weird, there we go. Look at that, that's a pretty good one there. You can kind of see, that's pretty good size there, it's longer than my fingers. Yeah, now we're getting enough for a meal. I was worried we weren't going to be able to have enough for a catch and cook, but we do. But once again, before you get all super excited and go taking off running to go pick the next one, you just kind of mark it in your mind where it's at, and you just kind of scan the area behind you where you came from. You just kind of scan the whole area and make sure you don't miss any before you get up and go. I'm not seeing any more from this vantage point, so I'll go over there to that one, and then I'll do the same thing again over there. Because sometimes just moving over a few feet opens up the visibility of a bunch more. Sometimes you gotta crawl. This one here, I'm having to crawl through bushes to get to it. Oh, that's a good one there. Look at that thing. That's pretty good. I don't know if I clarified or not a second ago, but the reason why I like to pinch them off instead of just plucking the whole thing out, some people say you shouldn't do that because it messes up the mycelium. Some people say you should do that because it makes it grow better. But honestly, I don't know anything about that. I do know though that I hate my, uh, dirt in my mushrooms. And so if you pluck them, it's a lot better. If you just pull the whole thing out and you drop them in your bag like this, then dirt gets all down through those pores and they are not fun to clean. Once again, while we're down here, we'll kind of scan the area. There's probably honestly more down underneath these leaves, so we will definitely come back to this spot later in the season once they're a little bit bigger, especially if we get some rain. I don't see any more in this area poking out of the dirt or out of the leaves. Well, for a second I got excited. I thought I found some mint, but it's just catnip. It's not mint. That's a bummer. I don't have a cat, so I won't bother picking any of that. Every now and then you can find wild mint growing. Makes really good tea. Looks like a bunch of catnip over there. You know, something interesting about this area, now that I think about it, is I never really find wild edibles in this area other than mushrooms. Some places I go, you know, they'll have tons of different things you can find to eat. But around here, not so much. I don't know why that is. Look at all this catnip. Tons of it. All three here. What is this? This looks like it might be something good. I don't know. Doesn't really have a smell. That's kind of spooky. If I see something, I don't know what it is. A lot of times I'll just get out the uh, Google app. Just a second, let me get it open here. Okay, and you can actually take a picture like this. Oh yeah, see that's hemlock. That's bad stuff there. I thought it looked somewhat familiar. Don't want to eat that, unless you don't want to be among the living any longer. <laughs> 
And before you do eat anything in the woods, you should always make quadruple sure you know what you're eating before you eat it. And if it's the first time you've ever eaten it, you should only eat a small amount of it, like a small sample. That way you can make sure your body doesn't have any allergic reactions or anything like that. I know I say that in just about every video, but man, I would sure hate for somebody to see one of my videos at random and go out in the woods and pick something and eat it and then get really sick off of it. So better safe than sorry. Oops. Here's a bunch of mica caps. I'm not going to mess with those though because I will not be home for a long time and by the time I get home those will be spoiled. I didn't bring my cooking stuff with me or else I would pick them. Go ahead and cook them up out here in the woods. But unfortunately I cannot stay the night anywhere tonight. I have to be back home. So we're kind of on a time schedule. I see lots of good potential area. A lot of times when you're looking you want to look for trees that the bark is starting to fall off of. Sometimes that's a really good spot to find morels, especially elm trees and cottonwoods in my neck of the woods. Different parts of the country, they like different trees. But around here, elms, cottonwoods, sometimes maples. But once again, it's not a guarantee. You know, something that's really different this year compared to last year and even a lot of other previous years is there's a lot of green here on the ground. Tons of ferns and flowers. Looks like honeysuckle, all sorts of stuff growing back here. I don't think I've ever seen this. This pile of wood right here, the first year I found this area, there were tons of mushrooms growing all through here as well. And then around all these trees around it, there was boatloads of them. But it was just leaves on the ground at that point in time. All this extra stuff wasn't here. So I don't know if this stuff means the ground is coming back to life and we're going to start having good years again. Or if this means this stuff's going to take over and this will be the last year I ever find anything here. <laughs> Hopefully it's the former and not the latter. Technically these are edible right here. I'm pretty sure the, the roots, the stem, the leaves, the flower, everything on these is edible. I know the flowers are. Now they kind of have like a, a sweet flavor, but they're also a little bit bitter. Most wild greens are a little bit bitter. That's why it's usually good if you're going to eat wild greens like that. that you uh, go ahead and just cook them in with eggs and make an omelet. I was sure hoping to find at least a few more. I mean, we got four of them here. I mean, that's technically probably enough to make a small little snack, appetizer type snack, but I was hoping to find a little bit more than that at least. Be sure, sure would be cool if we could find about a dozen of them. Or if I could find something else to cook too, that'd work. Just not having much luck. But we've got a little ways further to go in this area, and I think I'm going to check one more spot while I'm in the neighborhood so there used to be water all the way up to right about here morels really like water and so with the water being so far away now i mean now the water is i don't even know probably a thousand yards that way it's a long ways away compared to the you know maybe 50 feet that it used to be if we could have a good wet 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 year where we just get tons and tons of rain bring the water levels back up I think that would do wonders for the morel season next year. Once again, this all looks totally different than it did last year. Every year it looks a little bit more different as these logs decay and trees fall and new trees come up and new stuff grows. Come on, morels, where are you hiding? Where are you hiding at? I need just a few more. Oh, there's some dandelions. I was wondering why I hadn't seen any dandelions. I remember one year this little field area right here. It was clear full of morels. I didn't hardly find any over there, which was really weird to me. But then this whole field was just clear full of them. But they're a finicky little thing, that's for sure. Turtle. I don't know what it is about turtle shells. But when you go mushroom hunting, you will find a ton of turtle shells. If I can get to flip over, there we go. Yeah, you will see a ton of those. I don't think there's been a year yet. I didn't find those. There have been some years I found more turtle shells than I did mushrooms. And there's the creek for what's left of it. <laughs> this used to be really good catfishing down here. Well, I guess it wouldn't be catfishing. It would be catfish fishing is the way to say it. Because you weren't catching cats out of here. You were catching catfish. You used to be able to actually take your boat through here. Now it looks like it's maybe a foot deep out there in the middle. It used to be where I'm standing at right now. It used to be several feet deep. And then the water came all the way up in here and wrapped around that corner up there. It's not as low as the place I went last time though. 
that reservoir I went to was a lot lower than this. This is down, oh, from where it was up there, it's down probably, I'd say, two, maybe three feet. Whereas that reservoir I went to is down probably five to six feet. So evidently they've got more rain out this way than they did up there. And you may be wondering, Silas, why do you keep pausing in the middle of your sentences? It's because I'm not the world's greatest multitasker and I'm trying to look for mushrooms while I talk to you guys. Okay, last area. If I don't find any in this area, I'm gonna go ahead and call it quits. I'm gonna hit the road and go check somewhere else. Well, it's a good thing I came up here. There's one right there. Make sure I don't step on any. I don't see any more. There's one right here. Now look at this one. This is interesting. You can see there, the tip of this one's all shriveled up and black. What causes that is this one here probably popped up, oh, five days ago or so, and it was exposed above the leaves, and we had a freeze. I think it got down to like 20 some degrees. Oh, I see another one over there. But before we get to that, it got down to below freezing, and morels do not like freezing temperatures, and so it zapped the tip of it. Not a big deal. You just take the tip of that off, like that, just throw it away, and then you can just keep the rest of it. Oh, I see another one right here. Got to be really careful walking through here. Don't want to step on any. That's five, this is six. There we go. Now where did I see that other one? There it is over there. This is like a picture perfect one over here. I think I'm gonna make my thumbnail out of that one over there. But actually, I know right where it's at. It's by that skinny tree. So I'm going to walk another direction and kind of circle around and see if I see any more. That's another trick I use is I never deadhead. See, I'm glad I didn't deadhead. There's one right here. A good one sticking up out of the dirt. There we go. Oh, there's another one right there and another one right beside it. Oh boy, we're on it now. Oh man. Oh, this makes me feel so much better. Last year, I didn't find any at all in this area. And so now we're actually finding some. There's another one right there. These are a little bit small. That's kind of borderline right there. Part of me wants to leave it, but this is public property, and uh, somebody else could come out here and find these in a week. Now, this is a pretty secluded spot. It's really hard to get to, so I doubt that would happen, but you never know. I have found people in really hard to find spots before. Just kind of scan. Oh, there's one right over there. Now, a lot of times, if you're finding them in an area, what I'll do is I'll take my bag, and I'll just set my bag down, which this area is pretty small, so I don't think I need to do that. But that's another way to kind of remember where you left off at. Look at that bad boy sticking out of there. Oh yeah, man, this makes me feel good. This makes me feel happy. I'm feeling way better than I was when I first got here. Oh, there's another one. Oh man, this is awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I think we are about at our dozen now that I wanted. I'm not gonna stop though. That's how it works sometimes. You'll hike for miles not find nothing and then you'll find a whole bunch in one spot and then you'll hike for more miles and never find nothing again <laughs> i did want to clarify something though i think i said it wrong earlier i said something about uh i may have wasted my time even if i didn't find a single mushroom there's no such thing as wasting your time when you're out in nature exploring getting some fresh air getting some exercise there's no such thing as wasting your time so i said that wrong and i do apologize okay so now i'm at the point where i left my bag there because i know that other mushroom is over there and so I'm going to go this way because I see another one back in here. So I kind of scan around, make sure. You know what's crazy, guys? That first little batch of mushrooms that I found, like three of them together, was right here. And see, I missed this one. It was right behind me the whole time. But I'm coming from a different direction this time. And that's probably the biggest one of the day. <laughs> it's crazy. Go ahead and grab that one out of there. You may be wondering why I cover up the stumps a little bit. That's just in case somebody else does come through here. They don't see a bunch of stumps. Because I have been in an area one time where I found a whole bunch of stumps where somebody else had already been there and it was a pretty accessible place right off of a walking trail. 
closer to town and uh I just remember that area and I went out there the next year and I found a whole bunch. So I'm sure whoever found them that first year probably came back and said, hey, who beat me to the spot? I think last time I went that direction. So this time I want to kind of scan through here. Over there is where I just found a bunch of them. So there's probably like this little tiny trail right through here. It's where they're growing. That's definitely the biggest one of the day though. So there's the one that I saw earlier that I knew was right by that small tree. As I'm coming through here, I spot another one over here. That's a good looking one right there too. I really like the, the shape and the design of that one. Actually, you know what, before I pluck that, I'm gonna get a picture of that. So I laid down to take a picture of this one. And as I'm taking the picture, look in this direction, right over there by that little piece of green, something coming out of the ground, there's another one underneath the leaf. I would have never saw that if I didn't get down here to take a picture of this one. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I never would have saw this little baby. Scan the area. I have not been down there yet. We'll go down there here in just a second. Make sure I don't miss any up here first, though. I was about to go down the hill. I looked over here and spotted one. So I'll lay the bag down, work my way through here slowly once again, scanning all around me as I go. This is another one here that must have caught the freeze a little bit. A little bit black on the tip. A little bit dried out too. That's definitely been up for a little while. I came down the hill, I looked back up the hill, and you can actually see my foot tracks where I walked through here. And right beside my foot tracks is another one that I missed. I don't know how many times I'll search an area and then I'll ret retrace my steps and go back through that same area for that reason right there. It's all about angles and sunlight and shadows and you name it. We're definitely over a, a dozen now, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm feeling a whole lot better. I mean, I was happy with four. I was happy with the first one we found. I was happy when I wasn't at work and I was out here in the woods. But it just makes it that much better when you've got a bag of mushrooms. Well, I think we might have found them all. <laughs> this dumb ball right here gets me almost every year I see that thing down there. And it's the same color as a, a, a mature morel. And I see it and it gets me excited. I should just throw it away, but I don't know. I kind of like finding it every year. It's probably my fifth year of finding that thing. Yeah, I'm not seeing any. Usually I find a bunch of them right around this tree. Where that ball's at. Not this year. Where I found all these, I've actually never hardly found any. Maybe one or two. They move around, that's for sure. Wherever the mycelium feels like producing fruit that year. That's where they grow. A lot of people don't realize that, but these don't grow individually. These are just the fruit off of like a big tree or bush or whatever you want to call it that's underground. It's called mycelium and it fruits and it sprouts these up when the conditioners are just right. And then they spread spores and I mean tons, millions of spores and maybe a handful of those spores will establish a colony for a future mycelium. That's why morels are so hard to grow, is the mycelium is super, super finicky. And it's almost imp impossible to establish a colony of these. Now there's other varieties of morels that they grow over in Asia that they can actually mass produce. However, they aren't, aren't nearly as good as these. They don't have the same flavor. They're not the exact same species. So not the same thing. As far as these North American morels, I mean, a few people claim to have been able to grow them, and you can buy growing kits online, but uh, that's not how it works. If that was real, these things are worth a fortune. I mean, there's probably 30 to $40 right here in this bag of just these little tiny things. If people could mass produce those, then uh, I guarantee you they would. And we are back to where I found that very first morel right there. I have gone back and forth and back and forth. I have not found any more at all. So I'm going to scan through here one last time on my way out. And then we're going to go to another area. Now this other area I'm going to go to, I have not been there for, man, probably five years at least. The last time I went there, it was all completely flooded. And usually right after a flood, they don't grow that good. So I just never went back. But I'm hoping that that ground area is a little bit lower than this. So maybe there's a little bit more moisture. And so maybe we'll find something there. Or maybe we'll find something other than mushrooms there. I really don't know. But uh, we're going to go check it out. One other thing that I like to do, just because I'm paranoid as I'm leaving a place... Now that I'm actually getting out close to the road again, is I like to take whatever I found, if I found a small amount, and just uh, drop it inside my coat like that, 
go ahead and zip my coat back up if I can get this to work. This coat's getting worn out. My zipper takes two hands now. Last year I'll be wearing this thing. But anyway, now you can't tell that I have anything in my hands. And so it just looks like I'm a guy out walking around with a camera. So when he sees you walk out of the woods with a bag full of morels, you can just about guarantee that they're going to want to go in those woods and check them out. It's kind of funny how protective people are over their morel spots. <laughs> and we are back in the woods. I counted there are 16 mushrooms. I put them in a paper bag in the truck in the shade so they'll be all right when I get back. I was actually looking at the map and I saw an area that I have never been to before. And I thought, you know what? I want to try that. It was a little bit of a hike to get here, but we made it. And so I'm going to look around. Uh, being a brand new area, I don't even know where to start looking, so I guess we'll just have to hike all over the place and see what we can find. This looks like a somewhat promising spot right here. This tree has just fallen over recently. All the bark is still on it, and so that means there's still lots of nutrients in it, and a lot of times I have found morels growing around trees that have recently fallen. This might be a spot to come back and check a little bit later in the season when they're growing really good. That's the bad thing about checking new areas early in the season is maybe it does grow morels, it just doesn't grow morels yet. And so you come through here and you don't find anything and then you just assume, oh, well this area doesn't grow them. But maybe it does. Here's another tree that's somewhat recently blown over. The bark is just starting to come off of it. It's got good sunlight. So the soil will be nice and warm. But just because it looks like a good spot doesn't mean it is a good spot. Check this out. They're all way too dried up. But man, I bet you last winter, that was the mother load on this tree right here. There's tons of them growing on it. Of oysters. You know, with that rain we just got, I'm actually kind of shocked that there aren't any fresh oysters growing. Or none that I found anyway yet. It's been ideal oyster weather. Man, this area looks really, really good for morels. As you can see, the leaves in this area aren't quite as thick. Something else I'm looking for while I'm here, besides just edibles, is uh, deer sheds. I usually find at least one shed a year, sometimes more. Usually by this late in the year, most of them are gone. They've either been found or uh, throughout the winter, squirrels and things like that like to eat them. The best time to go shed hunting is like February or around there. I found a buck one time. The whole deer was there. It was all decomposed, just the skeleton, but it had been hit by a car and it was still just a little bit of meat left on it. And so it was kind of stinky. And so my friend was with me and we actually put it on the roof of my Jeep and pinched it between my roof rack pieces. And uh, I drove down the highway. <laughs> it was way down in Southeastern Kansas. And I drove all the way down the highway with a a rotting zombie deer skull on top of my jeep. Looks like a pelvis, I think is what that is. That's interesting, look at this tree here. How it grew out this direction and then just arms started going straight up out of it. <laughs> Almost looks like a, a hand with three fingers and a thumb. That's about the only interesting thing I've found so far. This area sure looks good, but I don't know. Like I say, maybe it's just too early. Oh, this is interesting. Evidently, somebody was living in this area or something, because you can kind of see how there's a the square rectangle set up, whatever here, I just said a square rectangle, that's funny. But it's like a rectangle. You can see there was a campfire here. There's these logs over the top. I wonder if they had some sort of top over their shelter. That tree's been cut down by a human. Here's a camera laying right here. And then here's a roll of toilet paper on this tree. So evidently this was the bathroom over here. So I don't know if somebody was just camping out back here or if they were living here. It's been abandoned for a while. Not a huge crazy long time because there's still toilet paper on this roll. It's not completely rotted but this is definitely probably last year. So I don't know if somebody was just camping or if it was a <laughs> homeless person living back here. Hard telling. This is a long ways back in here though so I don't know. Hard telling. That's why I always take Mr. Glock with me when I go on these adventures. You never know. I'm not too worried about animals other than possibly mountain lions, but uh, the two-legged variety are the kind I worry about the most. Only one time have I ever actually stumbled upon a homeless person when I was out mushroom hunting years ago. 
and I didn't like get right up on him. I got probably from here to like the edge of that field over there and realized what was going on. So I just turned around and went the other direction. There's some remnants of someone's toilet paper. So either they were back here deer hunting and uh, they left that behind or it may have been that person that was living over there or camping or whatever. Hard telling. I do see shotgun shells and whatnot. So it's possible that, that was just a hunter, hunter had that set up as a temporary uh, place to stay while he was out hunting. Well, there's some mushrooms. Looks like some ink caps. They're pretty dried up though, so not gonna mess with those. But it's something at least. I was gonna say, man, I haven't seen nothing growing back here. Don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see that yellow butterfly on this camera. Come on, buddy, land. Thank you. I don't know if I got a good shot of that or not. That thing is beautiful. I'm swinging up to one last little area over here that I haven't checked in this spot yet. And then I think we're gonna leave and go check another spot. We're a little bit closer to civilization now, out to the road again. I just noticed there's a old tree stand up here. Looks like it's been there a long time. All the stuff's pretty rotted. It'd be kind of scary to go up that now. It's amazing how many times these old tree stands are just left abandoned. I've got one on my property that's abandoned. They even put a chain around that one now that I look at it. <laughs> they wanted to make sure it didn't fall. I don't know how good of a spot that is. Evidently, that tree must not have been here when they put that in because they don't have a very good view out there. But it seems like every year I find deer stands where I go out in the woods. And they're usually abandoned. Every now and then I find one that's still pretty fresh that I can actually climb up and sit on, but I don't feel brave enough to climb that one today. Eh, it might be okay, but I'm quite a ways back in here. And uh, this is a really bad thing, but uh, nobody knows where exactly where I'm at right now. I told people where I was going, and that's where I went, but now I'm not there anymore. So <laughs> I don't want to do anything too risky. What is this? Oh, check that out. There we go. A bunch of ants. Oh, look at all these. Oh, no, I thought that was dried up oysters, but that's what's left of a crab apple. Never mind. This thing's clear full of ants. They're coming out of it like crazy. Look at that. Man, it's pretty gnarly right there. I was going to save it as treasure that I found out while mushroom hunting, but now I don't know. There we go. I think I got most of them out of there. I'm balancing on a log. As you can see here, I'm trying to walk and talk and show you guys this at the same time. But this is a 1960s water gun. I did my little Google image search thing on it. And I'll tell you, you know, that's pretty neat. That's probably the oldest toy I've ever found. Probably some kid was playing with it on the beach at the lake or, or he lost it off the boat or something like that and it got washed up here in these woods during a flood or something like that and been sitting ever since. I collect all sorts of treasures like that Pepsi bottle I saved it. I've got a couple toy cars that I found out in the woods. And I've got I've got a handful of stuff, baseballs, things like that. Just I don't know why I save them. I just find them interesting. Whenever I find something interesting out in the woods, felt obligated to take it home and before I would just kind of stash the stuff forever but now that I have a nice big shop I think I'm gonna start taking the stuff and uh, put it up for display there's somebody's chair I found this little dry creek bed with all these little saplings growing along it and I have found a lot of mushrooms in spots exactly like this so I'm kind of checking it out the only issue I see is that right now it's kind of right after lunch and there's shade all through here so it might be a little bit too early I think what I'm going to have to do is kind of meander back towards the truck. I'll look as I go, but I think what I'll do is I'll wait till later in the season. And if I'm having a really good season elsewhere in places that I know grow them, then I'll come back to this area. And if the season's just not a good season anyway, then I may not come back here. But that's one way to tell for sure if a spot produces or not, is if you're picking them like crazy elsewhere, if you don't find them in a spot, that spot probably doesn't grow them at all. Man, every direction you look, Looks like prime habitat. I know I'm missing a lot of area. This is where a guy needs a partner. If you had a partner out here, you could comb a lot more ground, a lot more efficiently. But everybody I know has these things called jobs and I can't convince anybody to skip out on that to go look for mushrooms. <laughs> I am definitely blessed to be able to do this. Just to be able to take off on a random Thursday and go out and look for mushrooms. I'm not entirely sure where I'm at. I'm actually kind of lost. I don't remember where I parked at or, or nothing, so. 
I'm gonna have to hop on the GPS real quick and see where I'm at. We are in the thick bush now. Way back up in here. I can't even stand up straight hardly. There we go. We're trying. Not having any luck, but it's not for lack of effort. Man, this area has looked so good. I just have a hard time believing that nothing grows here. It looks like something has been living inside that tree. <laughs> How close do I dare get? It doesn't look like anything's home right now, but I don't think I want to push it. I decided to come check one more spot. I haven't been here since 2020, so four years ago. I found a bunch of mushrooms. I found some of the biggest mushrooms I ever found uh, to the north of here a little bit, going the other direction on this road. This road here, people used to come down here and go off-roading, and uh, that's why I quit coming down here, is because it was not easy to get back here. You either had to hike about three miles, or you had to have like a UTV or ATV or something like that to get back here. And so today I just was in the area, so I happened to drive by, and they actually uh, redid the entire road up to a certain point. They didn't do the whole road, obviously, because where I'm walking right now uh, has a cable across it saying no vehicles beyond this point. But the last time I was here, you could actually still somewhat go down this road as long as it wasn't too muddy. But you can see people had trails all through here, and people used to come back here and go off-roading all the time. So evidently the uh, state shut down everybody's fun. <laughs> Believe it or not, years and years ago, this actually used to be a road. And there was a bridge across this creek that we're almost to and uh that bridge is long gone this road has not been a fully maintained road in i don't know probably 40 years 50 years my dad used to deliver mail and stuff out in this area or newspapers or something like that and uh, i asked him about it and he says that he can't remember ever going down this road so it's probably been since at least the 50s or 60s that it was shut down but here's the creek all the way at the other end of this creek one time i found a bunch of mushrooms and it was early in the season, so we're gonna try that again. There is a little bit of water in the creek. That's what I was hoping to see. Last time I was here, there was quite a bit more than that, but I mean, this is this is better than what I've been seeing in most places. And it's flowing water, it's not stagnant either, so definitely a good sign. I'm gonna start hiking back there and I'll let you know if I find anything. There we go, check this out. A whole bunch of garlic mustard right here. If you watched my video with the bicycle, I found a bunch of garlic mustard, harvested it to get back and I ruined my eggs. And I had eggshells all through. That's a whole other story. You'll have to watch that video if you want to understand the context. But I was not able to actually eat any of it. So I think since I'm going home this time, I'm going to go ahead and harvest some of this. Take it home. Maybe uh, we'll make an omelet or something like that to go with our mushrooms. As I mentioned in that video, this is actually an invasive species. So uh, don't feel bad about picking as much as you want. If you don't use it all, it's not a big deal. This is a lot bigger than what I picked, but that was also two weeks ago. There we go. That should be plenty for one omelet. Since we're going to be frying some stuff up, I'm going to go ahead and pick some dandelion flowers as well. Might as well since I've already got the bag out. I bypassed a lot of dandelions earlier just because I didn't want to get the bag out just to carry dandelions. But bag's already out, so we might as well pick ourselves a feast. There's some more over here. This area has a lot more stuff growing. Than where I was earlier, that's for sure. Now when you fry dandelions, they don't take nearly as long to fry as mushrooms. So you gotta be kind of careful about it or else you'll way overcook them. I don't remember exactly where it was that I found mushrooms last year. There was two spots. One spot I remember finding a bunch of them around moss, kind of like this. So I need to be keeping my eyes out for them. It was somewhere right around here. Be nice if I could find a few more dandelions. There's an old sign, what does it say? Authorized vehicles only. It took me a second to even read what that said. That's crazy. Hard to think there used to be a road here. Butterflies everywhere here. There's a bunch of white ones flying around too. It was just like this area where I found those morels before. There's a lot of moss growing out here. It was a lot wetter that year, though. That was the year I found the most morels I've ever found. Mainly because I was unemployed for the entire month. Because of all the shutdowns and everything. So pretty much all I did was go out and go mushroom hunting. 
I just checked the GPS and it was actually right in this area. I marked the spot where I found them all. Like I was saying earlier though, they do move around so they may not be in the exact spot and it's been four years so they may not be here at all. But we're gonna kinda search around. I didn't find that many up here anyway. Most of the ones I found were down closer to the creek which is right over here. And I think the reason why I found so many at the creek is because there was an elm tree that somebody had just cut down and they were growing like crazy right beside the stump. There we go, there's some garlic mustard flowers. I believe the flowers are edible too. But I'm not going to harvest those. I'm going to wait until I find out for sure on that. My internet's not working, so I can't can't look it up. But there's a whole bunch of them with flowers back here. I mean, I guess I can go ahead and pick them. And then if they won't work when I get back, I can throw them back out later. Real pretty things, though. They're not even going to hold together. They're already falling apart. So, yeah, maybe we'll just wait till we're going to actually be cooking on location. I kind of wish I would have brought my cooking gear now. You kind of need to cook right here beside this creek. Nice and peaceful back here, that's for sure. Nice and peaceful. I see a dandelion. You don't have to cook dandelions, you can actually eat them raw, the leaves and the flowers. But I'm not in the mood to make a salad today, so I'm saving just the flowers to fry them up. Oh my word guys, look what I just found. I think those are oysters and they look like they're still good. Oh boy, that's exciting. That is super exciting right there. I don't have my knife to cut them off though. Oh yeah, they're still good. They're, they're a little bit on the older side. They're not super fresh, but they'll work. They've got a little bit of white fungus growing on them. You can kind of see up in there. So I don't want all that. I only want a little bit. So I got my house keys here. That's going to be my knife. I don't have to do this two-handed though. I don't know how I forgot my knife. Yeah, see that's good. Good and clean there. No white fungus on that. Still a little bit dry, but still pretty soft. So definitely gonna get some good chunks off of this. Would have been infinitely easier. I mean, how do you go out on a foraging video and not take your knife with you? <laughs> oh well, life goes on. Yeah, there's quite a bit of that white fungus growing on these. I don't know what that is. You can see there, there's a bunch growing on this one. I don't know if that's bad or good, but I ain't gonna risk it. I'm still getting plenty of nice, uh, clean chunks off of it. There we go. I don't know if you can see. I didn't get a whole lot off of it, but I got quite a bit. I just, I don't know what that white fungus is, and I don't have, I don't have internet out here, so I'm just sorry, I'm just looking around. I don't have internet out here, so I don't want to risk it. Oh, looks like there's some more growing on the base of that one over there. It's kind of dried up, though. This in here was down here where it's nice and moist still and hidden in the shade. Don't want to risk it. That's plenty, though. I can mix that in with my omelet, with my uh, garlic mustard. That'll give it a nice flavor. We're going to have ourselves a good old feast when we get back to the house. There we go. Some more dandelions. That ought to get me plenty of dandelion heads now. There's a whole bunch of dandelions all through back here, but I think I have plenty. So I'm going to go the other direction towards the creek. I think I'm finally near where that stump was, where I found all those that one year. Although, yeah, that stump looks pretty well rotted. I doubt it's going to have any on it now. Got to figure out how to get down there. I'm going to go down this bank. I just don't want to fall in the water. Looks like there's a little bit of a bank down there that I can get across a little bit better. Here we go. See if I can do this. If I fall this way, at least it's on camera. So far, so good. Oh, yeah, no problem. Yeah, I don't see anything at all. I didn't have high hopes. I'll say that. It's been four years. It's usually the first year is the best year that after a tree gets cut down or falls down. And then the next year is a little bit, uh, still pretty good, but not quite as good. The third year is kind of your last year. And then after that, they really don't do much. But man, I sure got a lot off of it that year. I guess we'll kind of hike along the creek and see if we find anything else. The creek goes both directions, so I guess we'll keep going this direction for a little bit and then turn around. Some more oysters, although they look pretty dry. Uh, they could be salvaged, but we've got plenty. That's a gigantic dandelion head, though. I can't let that go. Look at that thing. That's massive. Gonna have to take that one. Dandelions all through here. Big old clumps of them. Wish I was finding mushrooms in clumps like that. 
well, oops, evidently, not very far, but by about eight feet, I was just now trespassing. I didn't even see the fence through here. I just crossed it down there in the creek. But uh, anytime you see purple on a fence, that means no trespassing. So I didn't pick anything over there or touch nothing. So, and I was only about eight feet over the line. I don't believe in trespassing, even for wild edibles. You should never go on somebody else's property without their permission, even if you can see the mushrooms. Once again, this looks like a really good area. I think we're just a little bit too early. Uh, the only issue with this area is going to be the fact that this uh, grass and weeds and everything are already really, really tall. So uh, finding mushrooms in this once they do start growing, if they do start growing, might be a challenge. Rumors of another turtle. There's plenty of garlic mustard and dandelions growing around here though. So even if I did come back here in a week or two and wasn't able to find any morels, at least I'd be able to find some of those. There's some big old dandelions down there by the creek again. But I've got plenty. I don't need to mess with those. Well, there's a bunch over here too. They're everywhere. <laughs> I was hoping maybe there were some big old morels sticking out of the bank, but don't see any. There's something growing. Can't really tell what those are. Some sort of fun guy. Go ahead and pluck one of them. They almost look like ink caps or something like that. They're just not very big or mature yet, like they just sprung up. But I can't really tell. I'm definitely not going to save them since I don't know what they are. Throw it down there. But there's some of them there growing. Maybe I'll remember this tree and come back and check it out in a little bit here in a week or two. It's that time of year. They're burning off all the fields. Well, I was gonna fry up the mushrooms and then cook an omelet with the rest of the stuff. However, I found out I got a bunch of stuff going on, so I don't have time for all that right now. So what I did was I saved half of the morels and then I took the rest and I got them all washed up. I've got the garlic mustard, the dandelions, the oyster, the morels. It's all in here, all washed, ready to go. I do need to cut the morels up a little bit. For the sake of time, I'm gonna do my nifty little trick that I showed you before where I just make omelets in a bag. That way I don't have a ton of dishes and stuff like that to do because I pretty much gotta maybe uh, eat and then run. I've got the water on boiling now. It's just about to boiling point. So I'm going to go ahead and get everything else prepped and ready. You just get a regular old Ziploc bag. Make sure you get a good quality one. You don't want too cheap of one. Get some eggs. I'm probably going to do, with that amount of stuff, I'm probably going to do three eggs, I think. You just crack the eggs and you dump them out in the bag. It doesn't have to be perfect. Once you have them in there, go ahead and zip it closed. There we go. And you just smush them up. Nice and stirred up in there. Make sure you get it all good and smushed and mixed. Got all my morels cut in half. As you can see, I just sliced them in half right down the middle. One thing I noticed about these is they didn't have any bugs at all. So that was really nice. So you just go ahead and take everything you're going to do. Got the morels. Got the dandelions. Right in there. Got the oysters. Got the garlic mustard. Well, I may have too much stuff. It may not all fit. I may have to add another egg. We'll see. Here we go. We'll zip it closed. Try to get some of the air out of it at least. You don't have to get all of it out. There we go. And now you just kind of mix that up once again. I may have to add that other egg. I'm not sure yet. Oh, we might be okay. You know the bad part is, is the thing that I found out about tonight is uh, we're going to be eating dinner with the family and that's here in about two hours. So here I am eating this great big omelet two hours before I got to go eat dinner. But I'm already committed now and the morels and the oysters, I could probably save those till another day. But the dandelions and the garlic mustard definitely won't last. You know, that really needs another egg. I'm going to go ahead and add another egg to that. Push it up again. Break that egg all up in there. Oh yeah, that's looking better. And for as big as this thing is, I'm probably going to have to put it in there a little bit longer. I'm thinking probably like 15 minutes or so. But it's pretty simple. If you didn't watch my other video where I did this, you just take this right here. Everything mixed up in there nice and good. You got the water boiling and you just set it in the water. You can actually cook several at a time if you want. If you get a big pot, you can cook multiple omelets at once. 
This is a great no mess way of doing it. Now there's no seasoning in there. I'll have to add seasoning once it's back out. But this is probably one of my favorite ways to cook omelets, mainly because of the no mess. I hate doing dishes. So there was a slight change of plans. <laughs> there was way too much stuff in one bag and it was not cooking all the way through, even after 15 minutes. So I went ahead, dumped it all out, and I guess instead of an omelet, I'm gonna have a scramble now instead. So I went ahead and added it to the frying pan with some butter. I cooked it up. Because I did that, I was actually able to go ahead and add the seasoning. I'm using, what is this? Uh, Kinder's The Blend. I really like the seasoning. So I got this cooking up in here. That should be done here in just a couple minutes. But yeah, that was way too much stuff for one bag. I, I should have known better. I should have split that into two bags inside the boil, but that's okay. There we go, that's much better. It didn't turn out like much of an omelet, but I feel much better about it. I was just worried it wasn't gonna be cooked, especially morels. They have hydrazines in them, so they have to be cooked all the way through. And those eggs were still running in the center of that omelet, so I just didn't feel very comfortable about it. So I went ahead and sauteed them up for a few minutes, and I think they're much better now. All right, it is time to dig in. We actually just moved and we do not have a kitchen table yet, or a dining table yet. Probably won't have one for about a month. So this right here is gonna be my table. It smells really good, so I'm looking forward to trying this. But before we eat, let's give thanks. All right. Here's the test. What do we have in this bite? We have, looks like a morel, some garlic mustard, and egg. Mmm. Oh, that is, that is good. I've never had that seasoning before on something like this, and uh, I really like it. I do want to try just a morel and some egg, though, right there. Oh yeah, that's good. Uh, here's a chunk of oyster. See, I like oysters, but now that I tasted a morel, the oysters aren't as good. Uh, what do we got here? Yeah, another morel and some more garlic mustard. I actually wish I would have picked more of that garlic mustard. That is actually really good. I had read that it was really bitter, but it was okay to mix in with like almonds or something like that, but that's like, that's really good actually. Good thing it grows everywhere. Definitely next time I go out, I'll find some more of that. Okay, just a morel with a little bit of egg on it. Mm-hmm. This one here, you can see got a little bit crispy. That's the best one yet. You know, part of me would... <gasps> no! I just dropped a morel on the floor. I mean, I have to eat it, it's a morel. It came off the ground anyway. Good thing our floors are clean. But anyway, like I was saying before I did that, I wish, part of me wishes that you could get morels all year long, but then they wouldn't be special. So uh, I'm kind of glad in a way that they're only for a short amount of time. It helps you to appreciate it a lot better. But I'm actually not gonna eat all this because I don't want to spoil my appetite for dinner tonight. So I'm gonna save this. I'll probably eat it for breakfast. That's the thing is once you cook them, you can just go ahead and put it in the fridge and you can reheat them later. Even if you fry them, like you roll them in flour and fry them in butter or whatever, you can eat whatever you want to eat and then you can save the rest for later. I am going to go ahead and eat the rest of the garlic mustard just because I don't I don't like to save greens and then reheat them the next day. I feel like they never turn out nearly as good. So I'm going to eat most of those out of here. The rest of this though, I'm going to save it. I eat that nice, healthy, nutritious meal and I wash it down with a Dr. Pepper. <laughs> what do you do? But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm not sure what I'll be doing next. Definitely going to go mushroom hunting some more. I don't know when exactly. Like I was saying earlier in the video, I do want to wait a little bit. I'll probably wait about a week or so, and then I'll go back out again and see what I can find. But anyway, stay tuned. Who knows what's going to happen. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below which was your favorite part. And let me know in the comments, would you be brave enough to try all sorts of random stuff that you find out in the woods? And actually, you don't even have to find it out in the woods. There's dandelions growing in my backyard. Now, I will say this. I don't recommend that you eat dandelions out of yards just because you don't know what sort of fertilizers or pesticides or things like that are on them. It's, it's best to find your stuff out in the wild. But anyway, I will let you all go. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. And remember to get out there, and I mean really get out there if at all possible, and find an adventure. We'll see you on the next one.